And welcome to Sunday morning here at Faith and Victory Church, third Sunday of 2022, praise God. And, um, you know, on the precipice of the snow, uh, snow apocalypse of 2022, um, you know, I'm not giving up on the snow yet, although they, they want to say it's not going to turn to all freeze and rain. Uh, I just don't want to give up. Lord, let the cold air be from the 10,000 feet to the ground. Hallelujah. Let's, let's get that, that uh, other mess out of here and have no freezing rain. But, you know, it could change all. All just don't have a foot. I would love that. Praise the Lord. All righty. So we want to get into today's message. So grab your Bible. Uh, share us on Facebook. Let everybody know uh, what's going on. And uh, you may want to have your phone out in case the power goes out. At least you'll be able to get it off the, off the cell towers. And um, praise the Lord. And um, we're going to talk about, you know, we're in the new year. We were talking about, we talked about, shared on the, um, the first about um, living for God. And we were talking about, you know, really kind of share for a couple of weeks along those lines of being committed to God, serving God, uh, selling out to him. Um. But also in that, in our walk with the Lord, we need to have goals. We need to have vision. We need to have purpose in the things we're doing. So I want to just share this morning. Um, it won't be very long. Um, but your dreams, your vision, your possibility, your destiny, your dreams, your vision, your possibility, and your destiny. Praise the Lord. Um, let's talk about, first of all, your dreams are really the desires of your heart. You know, we, we call it dreaming, or, you know, but really, um, we're not talking about, you know, going to bed at night and you, you're dreaming about you were being chased by a dog through the woods and you woke up, um, you know, huddled up under the covers and, or whatever. Um, I dream sometimes and I talk in my sleep. My wife's like, you know, what was going on? I said, what? Well, you, were, you were talking. Well, I was dreaming. I was, <laughs> hallelujah. That's not really, that's not what we're talking about. We're really talking about your vision, your, your, um, the desires of your heart. What is it that you desire? You know, what desires have been placed in your heart? Uh, Psalm 37, 4 says this, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Of thine heart. Um, we can kind of go at this one two ways. Um, you know, that whatever the desire of your heart is, when you delight in him, he'll give it to you. I kind of like to um, maybe go over to the other side of this and say, if you will delight yourself in the Lord, he will place desires in your heart. Okay, he will give, he will place, he will impart desires into your heart. There will be godly desires. There will be desires that will honor him and bless the kingdom. Um, and so <clears throat> let's delight ourselves in the Lord. Let's uh, take up uh, our, our heart pursuit of the Lord. As we talked about, you know, walking with God last week, you know, walking in the spirit, walking by faith, um, you know, walking in the word, uh, and then the week before living for him. As we live for God, as we uh, are led by the spirit, I believe God will place dreams, God will place desires in your heart um, that are supernaturally birthed and supernaturally given so that you can walk out his plan and his purpose for your life the, and his purpose and plan for your life, number one, is going to be the expansion of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You know, before the prosperity, before the houses and the cars and the homes, and, you know, all the things we've talked about for 30, 40 years about God wants to bless us with, he wants to expand the kingdom. He wants to go bring more people into the kingdom of God. That is, your, that is your number one purpose. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. And then as Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, um, he said, wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be what? Witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Glory to God. And so even, you know, getting born again in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the first thing Jesus said that we would do is be witnesses. And so I believe as we, as we pursue God and he places dreams in your heart and, and, and so forth, let's, not, let's make sure we, we lay them against, you know, 
what we believe is our dream, what we believe is our purpose, what we believe is going on. Let us make sure we lay that against the word of God and God's stated purpose for us of expanding the kingdom. <clears throat> Let's be careful not to make our dream to be, have Robin Leach, I don't even know if he's still alive, but Robin Leach at our house next week and have us on the next episode of the Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Hello? Well, God's not a respected person. He's going to bless the Christian. Our prosperity is going to show the world. No, we've got to be careful about some of these narratives we come up with. You know, it's the anointing on the word of God that pierces the hearts of man, not what size house you have. Hello. We, we adopt some things that really aren't uh, accurate <clears throat> and from, the, from, uh, world, from the world, uh, from God's word. We adopt them because they sound good. You know, well, God wants his children blessed. Well, I believe he does. But let's make sure we're not taking narratives and expounding them out uh, into a place they don't belong. God does want you blessed. But it's not going to be that you drove a Cadillac up this week. Well, I mean, what, what rich guy who drives a Lamborghini around going to be impressed with your Cadillac? I'm a Christian. I have a Cadillac. Mighty da. Hello? I wear hand-tailored suits. Yeah, they, make, they wear hand-tailored suits out of hand-woven Italian silk. There's always going to, you know, I remember that line from Star Wars, um, the very first prequel. Um, <clears throat> I don't even remember what it's called, you know. Um, Star Wars 1, oh, the, Phantom, the Phantom Menace. And they're, you know, they're going through, you know, the thing with Jar Jar Binks in the back and, you know, this big fish is trying to, has grabbed the, the underwater boat and, I'm, and this great big thing comes by and chops it in half and takes off with it. And, um, and, um, Qui-Gon Jim, I was about to have it, goes, there's always a bigger fish. Wouldn't let me get it out. You know, can't, when you go around a bunch of Star Wars nerds, they're always going out, uh, always outdo each other. Have a, had a better a grip on, you know, what I'm messing. Hallelujah. So let's just make sure that when, we're, when we begin to rehearse desires, number one, let's make sure that desire is godly. Amen. Two, that it can be used to advance the kingdom. God doesn't mind, God doesn't, uh, mind if you have a nice car and a nice house and nice clothes. But when they become the pursuit of your life, you know, that you'll go to a prosperity seminar way before you'll ever show up at a consecration seminar. Somebody say, ouch, or oh me, or help me, Jesus. I want to see some stuff scrolling on the screen now. So, you know, if we, I, I, they need an emoticon that's got somebody's head down with the finger up, the church finger, you know, um, like, Lord, help me. Glory to God. No, let's just make sure that as we, as we our, 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 um, our refocus this year in our, um, not our new assignment, but the reassigning and the, and the uh, direction God's leading us in is to live consecrated and dedicated lives to him. And that we, and that we, we have pursuits and we have dreams that will honor him and glorify him and carry out his will on the earth. Okay, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his height? Behold Solomon in all of his glory. Behold the grass of the field. You know, and he says this, and even Solomon in all of his glory was not like them. Hello? So take no thought of the morrow for sufficient is the evil in the day that in, in this day thereof. And so we need to be living our lives on a daily basis in pursuit and making sure that our dreams and so forth line up with purposeful uh, positioning and usefulness for the kingdom. That doesn't mean God doesn't want you to go out and buy a house. Okay. Or he doesn't want you to have a good car. But our, you know, sometimes we get we get over on things and get on narratives, and um, and I've seen it where you know a prosperity seminar will fill up four thousand people, and then somebody come along and talk about 
you know, uh, sacrificing and giving to the Lord and, and being committed to him and yielding your life to him. And you can't, you can't hardly get enough to fill up enough on the front row for the television cameras not to pick up empty seats all over the place. And I think this is a matter of heart and <clears throat> how much our pursuit is of God and not of our own wants. Amen. But if our, if our desires are birthed out of our fellowship and relationship with God, then our wants are going to be much more compatible with his purpose. Amen. Amen. Um, now y'all go ahead and send a couple of old me's up there. Or, you know, if somebody could come up with a help me Jesus emoticon, that would be great. Amen. Um, Psalm 21, one and two says this, the King shall joy in thy strength. O Lord. And in thy salvation, how greatly he shall rejoice. Thou hast given his hearts. Thou hast given him his heart's desire. And has not withholding the request of his lips. See here, it's talking about giving him God his heart's desire and not withholding the request of his lips in our lives. Now, some people are going to read that the other way. You know, um, he's giving you your heart's desire and not withholding the request of your lips. Um, but I, I think we also need to look at giving God his heart's desire. What is that? More people in the kingdom, more children in the family. More lost souls born again, more sick people healed, more lost, I mean, more people baptized with the Holy Ghost, more on fire for Jesus. Amen. Listen to this. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. Remember, reverentially uh, awed by him. He will hear your cry and he will save you. That was Psalm 145, 19. Uh, John 15, 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Now stop. We can't jump in here and run off with, ye shall ask what you will, and it's going to be done unto you. Well, whatever I ask God, he's going to give it to me. Man, there's a prerequisite there. There is a condition if ye abide in me. Now, abiding does not mean a temporary visit. Long enough to throw your, your uh, wish list down on the table and walk out the front door. Hello. Now, every year, my wife tells the kids to text her a copy of their wish list for Christmas. We can't even get them to stop long enough to write it down here at the house. They have to text it to us. Now, I'm not, I'm not throwing my kids under the bus. I know everybody's busy, and she's just trying to get an idea of, of things that they want because she wants to bless them. She loves her kids. I love them, too. We want, to do, we want to do good things for him. Amen. Hallelujah. But the word of God said, if Jesus said, if ye abide in me, reside, take up residence with, spend time with, fellowship with. And then he went on and added more to it. And my words abide in you. Now, what? why is that so important? When we think about the word abiding in us, yeah, but that produces faith, glory to God. And when you got faith, you can have, you can ask what you will and you'll get it. You know, faith works, praise God. All I have to do is believe I receive it and I have it. That's really not what he's talking about here. It took the, the full, to that, to that vent or that, uh, that side of it. If my words abide in you, it will govern your heart. What did, what, did, what did David say? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You see? When the word of God abides in you, it governs your heart. It, it puts down and shuts down self-centered selfishness and lascivious greediness. Hello? Hello? Now I know I've, I've been guilty of preaching some things in the past that I'd probably I'd probably have to go back and, and and readjust. You know, well you can't you got to have all this money if you're going to do anything for the kingdom. And there's a, there's a side of truth to that, but don't forget Jesus said the one woman who put two pence in gave more than all the other ones. It was the heart. Hello. See, God doesn't want to make people rich so that they can govern and have control over what the church or the kingdom of God does. 
Well, if you don't do it like the way I want it done, I'm holding my money back. Well, this way I think you ought to do it. If you don't do it this way, I'm not giving it. That's not why God, God did prosper people for them to be able to tell, um, you know, ministries how to spend the money they're giving them. Now, listen, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay to know that they're doing what with the money, that what they said. In other words, they're not out here, you know, you're giving uh, $50,000 a month and they're out driving around in, uh, in, with a uh, Rolls Royce and a chauffeur to and from church. I mean, that is excessive lasciviousness, and there's just no need for that. We just had a, a, a pastor um, that just came out that one of the one of the member of his church that left it was a, a, a apparently apparently a very faithful and loyal member for a, for a, a while, a right good while, but said that he they were told they could not talk to the pastor unless he first talked to them because of the anointing on his life, he couldn't be brought down by commoners. Now, this pastor apparently has been caught in adultery and uh, so forth and is losing, and has had to step down from his church. Well, if you can't talk to the commoners, get out of the pulpit anyway. Forget about the other, forget about the other stuff. Forget about the adultery. If you can't be touched by the people, and, you know, and, and I'll remember there was an area everybody got in there, can't, can't talk to the man of God. He's a, he's a, he, the, You'll mess up the anointing. You know, we put guards outside the door, make sure nobody got to us before church because we were anointed. If you're that anointed, it won't bother you. Somebody come up and say, hey, pastor. Or pastor, can you pray with me? Now, sometimes I will tell people, let me do it during the service. Not that I don't want to pray for you, but I want to, I want to make sure that, the, that I am in that flow to minister. Uh, but I'm not opposed to them. I'm praying for people outside of the pulpit before or after service. And I don't always do that. Sometimes I feel a sense I need to do that. Maybe they need to hear something in the service that will help them, okay, in their faith. But uh, it's not because they're going to bring me down out of the cloud of glory. we got to be careful. Can I get a grunt out here? Can I get a few uh, something going across the screen? Thank you. Hallelujah. Um, but the word abiding in you. So before you ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you, you got to abide in him and his word abide in you. How, how, how we've missed some of these points uh, in our walk with God. The, the abiding in him, fellowshipping with the Lord, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Ghost. Hello, abiding with him and fellowshipping with him and then having his word abide in you. Not just a casual, well, yeah, that's okay. I found me a scripture. Yeah. What about, you know, the whole thing? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Whole truth. Amen. It's not just part, part of the truth. It's the whole truth. Are y'all here? You got home. Now, you shouldn't be sleepy. You just got up. Hallelujah. <clears throat> John 15, 16, uh, Jesus went on to say nine verses later, ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he shall give it you. Now, how many times have we quoted whatever we ask the Father in the name, he's going to give it to us. Can I get an uh-oh out there? Any uh-ohs? Uh -oh. Got a holy grunt? Uh -oh. All right. He said he's ordained us that we should go forth and bring forth fruit and that our fruit should remain that. Who's, what's where you ask the Father? What's happening first? Fruit bearing. Well, we know from Paul's writing, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, faithfulness, temperance, meekness, okay? Um, Long-suffering. I don't think I got all nine right there, but I, that wasn't in my notes right here. There's fruit in our life that precedes asking whatever you will and him doing it for you. 
Why? Because if we don't let the Word of God govern and give parameters to the wish list, it will become selfish. And in many instances, outside the Word of God. For, uh, for example, I remember Brother Hagen coming in. Um, this was what I was at at Ramah. Um, we had come back from Christmas, and it wasn't, he didn't do it right away, but he was letting this person know he, 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 was, he was off. And Brother Hagen, you know, he was walking across campus one day, and uh, actually he drove up, and, and, and the board had given him. There were, there were some wealthy board members on uh, the board, and they bought him a Ford Bronco. Now, you got to listen. Well, if I'm in the ministry, I'm going to get a Ford Bronco. I'm gonna get, they're going to give me a church. Go back and listen to the years he had to walk and wear out three pairs of shoes walking to preach. And then he could only drive his car at night because the tires were so bald they would blow up in the heat of the day. Hello. And he, and he would go you know, and, and barely have enough money to, to put food on the table. But he kept doing what God told him to do and obeying God. Hello. So he didn't drive the Ford Bronco day one. We got people go to our Bible school and graduate next week. They think they're going to have a Lamborghini. You know? And they come out. They got their ministry is so slick and marketed. Uh, you, you, I mean, you, you, they've hired like, hired like a PR team to get them ready for ministry. You know, just let your gift make a way for you. You don't need to pay Leroy and uh, Associates, you know, $150 a month to market you. Hello. Well, I'm not getting any meetings. Maybe it's not time. Woo. Ouch. Oh. Uh, how many people did we lose just then? <laughs> oh, my. It's, it's still true. We thank God for a zeal and anointing, but I am telling you, um, one of the best words of counsel I ever I ever got was from a well-known uh, minister, pastor. And he said, uh, he said, you know, you guys need to go and work in the church for two years if you're called to travel. Those traveling guys need to go on the road for a couple of years before they pastor. He said, we'd have a lot less issues and trouble in our churches if that happened. Also teaches us something. Serving another person was never wrong, never hurts. You, you, can, learn, you can learn something from it no matter what goes on. Whether you were mistreated or you were treated like Jesus, you can learn things. But he said here that the bearing of fruit preceded asking what you will, that he wants to give to you. Amen. John 5, 14 through 15, uh, those, the verses right before this, and this is the, con I mean, I'm sorry, this is 1 John 5, not, not gospel. Of the, we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desire of him. You can't take verse 15 and go, now according to 1 John first, uh, verse 5, chapter 15, B, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions we desire of him. Why? Because he backs up in 14 and says, this is the confidence that we have in him if we ask anything according to his will. Well, how does that happen? If you abide in me and my words abide in you. See, your dreams will be a lot more productive and fulfilling if God gives them to you. Out of abiding with him, abiding, uh, you abiding with him, and his word abiding in you, and him birthing dreams in your heart, you're going to have a whole lot more success at receiving from God and getting the will of God and doing and the receiving from God than you are just going out here and coming up with some whim and saying, he'll give me whatever I want. Because whatever you want may not be in his will. Well, the Bible says he has a wife, has a good thing. Yeah, but he didn't say your neighbor's. You can't use one scripture when there's a different scripture that, that um, that's opposite of that. Well, he that has a wife finds a good thing. I believe I receive so and so. She lives right next door. She's married. 
You can't use the scripture. He that has a wife has found a good thing on your life, claiming that person when the Bible tells you that you should not look on your neighbor's wife. Are you here? You're gone home. And so this is why I say that um, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you. Let him birth in you your desires. And man, it's so much better that way. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Over the time we've been here in, in this city, wanting to get into a building of our own and finding a building and doing this, we have Jericho March. We've anointed. We've bound. We've rebuked. We've loosed. Hello. We've declared. We've done it all. Haven't we, honey? We can, I don't, that'd be a great place for church. We, we received that in Jesus' name. We need to ask the Lord. We need to ask the Lord. We just started this. Hey, that's our land. That's our building. We received that. And every time something would happen, well, what would the, the devil's just, you know, we want to blame the devil for keeping us out when uh, about a bunch of those times it was the Lord keep us out because it, it wasn't what he wanted. And we just didn't bother to ask him. Because we were using our what we learned from people. I have the desire in my heart. That's my desire. I want it. I receive it. It was a want. Make sure your wants are outgrowths of him giving you the desire. From abiding in him and his word abiding in you. Can I get your right pastor out there from somebody? I didn't get a single one. I'm waiting for my you right pastor. Amen. That'll kind of work. Now, you have to have a dream, like a desire. In order to have vision. You know, Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3 says, The Lord answered me and said, Write the division, make it plain upon the tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vi vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. <laughs> now that's kind of uh, King Jimmy, uh, whatever for, it's going to show up all of a sudden. It may not, listen. A lot of times we're looking for suddenlies. We think that we're going to go into church today, hear a sermon on receiving what you believe, what you believe and you shall receive. And we're going to get our suddenly when we get out in the parking lot. That rarely happens. And sometimes your suddenly shows up after the end of a long period of, of nothing. Okay. What does it matter? As long as the thing God promised you and the thing that God spoke to you and birthed in you comes to pass, does it matter if it happened 30 seconds after you prayed or 15 years? <laughs> um, Isaac was 25 years after God spoke to Abraham. We're not talking about reading the scripture and, and, and thinking, well, I believe I want a child. And then for 25 years, you're believing. We're talking about God supernaturally spoke to Abraham and said, and said, it's going to be the sand of the seashore and the stars of the heaven, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it was 25 years later. Hello. But then when God came and changed his name from Abram to Abraham, it was, it was three months before Sarah got pregnant. This time next year was one year. That meant three months later, she was pregnant. Hello. Are you here? Then that was a suddenly. After 24 years uh, and three months, nine months after that, we had Abraham, we had Isaac. Abraham had a suddenly. But for 24 years, he had nothing. Well, he had, he had Ishmael, you know, which was uh, the man of plan trying to accomplish the plan of God, and we're still paying the price for that one. Hello. 
but wait for it. Now, if it was going to happen when you got to the parking lot, there wouldn't be any need in waiting for it, would it? And I'll be honest with you. If you're believing God for something in church and you get in the parking lot and you get money or something, it's probably from seed you sown before then. I'm not going to say always, but it's, and probably in most cases it's going to be from an earlier seed, not just that thing you did that morning right then. But I'm going to tell you what, if we, if we say that, we'll be on the next television program telling how you give me money right now and God's going to give you a thousandfold return when you get out in the parking lot. Then everybody starts throwing money in the offering. Hello? But we have to write it down. We need to know what is in our heart and have it written out so that we can follow after that and keep a focus on that. Amen? Praise the Lord. And then, as you have been get granted God-given um, dreams, and you've gotten that, and it's become your vision now. You're, you're looking for that dream that God gave you. It's now your vision. It's the, it's the focus of your life. Understand it is your possibility. You can do it. A God-given dream that has become your vision can be accomplished by you because he's in it with you. Mark 9, 23, tell, Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Amen? Philippians 4, 13, another sometimes misquoted scripture. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now, we've had ministers go around, and uh, one well-known calls himself a minister, he goes in all over the place and tells everybody, say, I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all. No, that is not what the Bible says. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. What? Through the anointed one. Through Christ, Christ which strengthens me. It is the anointing working in me. Now, God's not going to anoint a, not a, a Ishmael vision. God's not going to anoint your man plan. Abram said, oh, the Ishmaelite might live before. I've heard you. I'm going to bless him, but he will not be the seed. Hello? Sarah will give birth, and that will be the blessed seed. Ishmael is not getting the anointing of the promise. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I can do all things through Christ, through the anointed one and his anointing, which strengtheneth me. So it takes the working of the anointing in your life to help sustain you. There are going to be seasons you go through, uh, maybe even in the year, in the same year, of having a dream, having a vision, you know, having your dream become a, your vision, having your vision written down, pursuing it, where you're going to need the strength of the anointing to, to, to remain steadfast and walk that out and see it through to fruition. We do not try this walk. We walk this walk. We, we, we um, fight the good fight of faith. We remain steadfast. We consider him faithful who promised. Amen. And we continue to walk out what God said to walk out regardless of the adversity, the circumstances, the opposition. And stop questioning every time something doesn't go smooth as silk. I must not have heard from God. Go ahead, you naysayer. Paul didn't do that. He said, Barnabas, hey, look, Barnabas. Or Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas, we're not going over here. We're going over to Macedonia. We're not running up over here. We're going over to Macedonia. Oh. We ain't got preached, got whipped, thrown in jail. And Paul didn't go, I miss God. 
Silas, I'm going to tell you, next time I want pizza, don't let me have it before I preach. I got indigestion and thought God said, come over here. So I saw him say, come over unto us. And uh, I sure thought I heard from God. No. At midnight, they prayed and sang praises. And the Lord heard them. And, and the prisoners heard them, I'm sorry. And the prisoners heard them. They're over here. Because God, Paul had a vision and it became, I mean, a dream and it became his vision is to carry the gospel all over the world to the Gentiles. To preach Jesus to heathens. Hello. And in walking that out, he got thrown in jail and whooped. And instead of whining and complaining, talking about how he missed God, and Silas sitting there, they're going, I'm going to tell you one thing, Paul. Next time you say you're, you got, you had a vision and we're supposed to go somewhere else, I'm going where we were headed before because you missed it. If we ever get out of this mess, I'm heading over there where we were starting. That must have been where we were supposed to go. You just missed it. That's not what happened. They prayed and sang praises. The prisoners heard them. Angel Lord came, shook the jail, opened all the doors, and they were so caught up having a prayer meeting with the Lord, they didn't even get up and walk out. And the jailer came in, was about to kill himself, and he says, do thyself no harm, for we're all here. And he got him born again, him and his whole house, and started the church, hallelujah, out of that meeting. Amen. I said amen. Well, if he had heard from God, he wouldn't have got whipped. Remember how um, Jesus said, I've shown him how great things he must suffer for my namesake? Thank you for your enthusiasm. But when, it, when you realize that the dream God gave you has now become your vision and that you can carry out and fulfill that vision because the greater one's in you, then it becomes your destiny. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know my thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, or as the marginal translation says, I hope in a future. See, your destiny when you have, have, have settled the dream came from God, when it's become your vision, when you realize you, it's not you alone, it's the greater one working in you, and you'll be able to do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you, and you're walking this out, it's now your destiny. And it just doesn't matter what gets in the way, you're destined. And you'll see it through to the end. Psalm 33, 11 declares the counsel of the Lord standeth forever and the thoughts of his hearts, his heart to all generations. Psalm 40 and 55, many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works that thou hast done and thy thoughts, which are to usward, thou, they cannot be revoked up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Isaiah 46, 10 and 11, declaring the end from the beginning in ancient times, the things that have not yet are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure, calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it and I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it and I will also do it. This is why it's so important that your dream come from God. Why? Because when he speaks it, my counsel will stand and I will do all my pleasure. Let me paraphrase that. He said it, he's going to do it. Yeah, but it's been so many, you got to get your eyes off the years and you really got to get your eyes off the other guy. Well, I just don't understand your church. You haven't done this. You haven't done so-and-so has done this and so-and-so has done that. You can't look at that. That cannot fit into the equation of did you hear from God? Are you, has it, has it gone from being hit, the desire he gave you to your vision and that you now understand that you can do it through the greater one in you and it's your destiny for the, to walk in that and that's just the way it is and God's counsel will be done regardless of the time. 
Hello? Are y'all here? You go home. Come on now. Poke across the screen and say, I'm listening, Pastor. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got a couple of Holy Ghost dancers out there. Let's see them. I'm waiting on you. All right. Praise the Lord. Why? Because Isaiah 55, 8 through 12. We're going to close here. And, and I hope that you're encouraged by this, what we're sharing today. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are my ways, or neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Stop back to the very first point we made. Delight thyself, Lord, he shall give you the desires of your heart. Man, when they come from God, they're birthed out of God, and he places them in you. It's a whole different plane. It's a whole different place than your way or your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud, so shall my what word be. Go back to that, the word abiding in you that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I sent it, uh, uh, that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For you shall go out with joy, be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. This kind of is a summary of everything we've talked about. Amen. When we allow God through our abiding with him and his word abiding in us to grant into our hearts the desires birthed out of heaven and we lay hold of those things and allow them to become our vision for our life. But not leaning to our own understanding or leaning to our own ability, we put our trust in God. So that we, we, we were able to say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And then it becomes our destiny. And we stand in the strength and the knowledge that what God said, he said um, that his counsel will stand. And I'll do all my pleasure. Let me, I can guarantee, I can tell you this for a fact. Man's counsel can waver and collapse and fall apart or be simply an Ishmael. Hello? You can birth Ishmael's standing your ground because you declared something that God wasn't in. Now you just go ahead out here on your own, right out here in this feed, and go, "Oh me, oh my," or "Help me, Jesus," or "Preach, Pastor." Where's Gabriel when we need him? <laughs> Preach, Pastor. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know Brother Gabriel. Some of y'all remember Brother. Gabriel. Oh yeah, he's a, he moved down to Georgia or somewhere. But Brother Gabriel, Preach, Pastor. Glory to God. He was the amen corner. Didn't need anybody else. I actually think he was louder than Brother Bill. <clears throat> and that's saying something. Love you, Brother Bill. Hallelujah. So what are we going to do? We're going we're to allow our dreams to be birthed of God. That to become our vision. I mean, right, we write it down. We, we write it. It becomes our focus. But we also... Understand, we need his aid, his strength, his ability to carry it out and make it our destiny that we walk in. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I hope you enjoyed this today. Um,
from the looks of things, it does not look like we're going to get to close before next weekend. So um, we were so hoping. We've been we've been pushing, doing everything I know to do to make it happen. We haven't been able to do it. But <clears throat> we have, we have a closing date set for the twenty eighth, and so we really look forward to seeing you on the twenty on the thirtieth. Hallelujah! In person, glory to God. At least by this week, maybe one more week virtual, and then we're going to be live and in person. Hallelujah! Praise God. But it's time to give. Hallelujah. If you need to give uh, electronically through either uh, PayPal or Cash App, um, go ahead and get your offering ready. If you want to give by uh, mailing, uh, uh, just put it on, your, on the uh, Facebook feed. Uh, Pastor, I want you to give me your, you know, um, give me the address and we'll, we'll text it to you. Hallelujah. Um, and we'll get that to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. If, you, if you're using uh, snail mail with checks, which are quite fine, um, we're not going under tomorrow. Trust me. We're not going under. We're only going over. Hallelujah. But um, it's it's time to give. Jesus said to give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men shall give unto your bosom. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take this time to uh, bless the people as they bring their tithe and offering into the storehouse of God. We thank you that heaven's windows are open unto each and every one of them. And to empty out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. We thank you for their delights in land. They lend to many and don't borrow. The devil is rebuked for their sake. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Don't forget Tuesday night prayer. And then Wednesday night midweek service. Praise the Lord. Um, we're, we're continuing our study with E.W. Kenyon, the Bible and the light of our redemption. Glory to God. So uh, until we meet again, um, be blessed, stay warm. Um, we just pray that people keep their power. And uh, if some have already lost it, we, we uh, uh, pray that they get it back real quick. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. We love you. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever born, is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online. Good night or good day. Hallelujah.